quite a few years. Um, lifelong resident of New Brighton. Uh, as Wayne said, I, <coughs> I volunteered <laughs> to, to work on this cart for the museum. Uh, this first image is from brochure from the Guild of Metalsmiths, which is another volunteer organization I belong to, which provided me with information that got me going on this project. They're a volunteer uh, metalworking group that artists, blacksmiths, whatever, they, they conduct classes on blacksmithing and other forms of metalworking. And they Without them, I wouldn't have been able to do this project. This is what the cart looked like. You can see you know, the, the rims, very poor condition. And, and, and the rest of the cart isn't all that great either, but there's didn't seem to be a point of fixing it up unless you could fix the wheels. Oh, excuse me, how old do you think that thing was? I mean, do you know how old it is? Turn of the century? Joyce, you got any? We don't have that information yeah. from the Hedman oh. Collection. This came from the Hedman Collection. Sheriff, Sheriff um, Edmonds Hedman donated any, bequeathed to us as well, anything that related to railroad. And the middle part there and that part were a small part of that donation. And what led me into this project was this mail cart here um, was basically rotted out, and I volunteered to fix that up. And after I was done with that project, I, I think you were pleased with it. Because then they started looking at, at the, the baggage wagon and, and going, you think you could do something with this? <laughs> and, and after talking with a, a blacksmith that, with the Guild of Metalsmiths who had worked on wagon wheels, said, oh yeah, we can, you, you can get parts for these things. And so I went and well, I, I, I got the wheels off the cart and I, I took them to this guy and he looked at them and goes, yeah, you can, that, that's rebuildable. And we went over to another member who was, was nearby who was dealt with the Amish on getting wheels fixed. And he told me the deal was, was you write them a letter. <laughs> and he gave me the name and the address of the the Amish fellow that, that supplies these parts. And so I wrote him a letter and he wrote back with prices and said, yeah, you can supply these parts. And so I came back to Wayne and said, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> you can see you know, the, the, just the, the rock and the wheels. Photos. That's when I got it home and took the, the iron band or the tire off of the off of the rim. And it just exposed the rotted off tenons from the spokes, the rotted out spokes. So I got them apart. Now this is a picture of the the rim pieces that the Amish fellow made. And when I gave him the go ahead to, to make these things, he said it'll be two, two and a half months before he'd have them ready. And that took about three months. And then when he went to ship them, he, he looked at his inventory of spokes that I ordered, and he goes, oops. <laughs> I don't have an inventory. But a few days later, a box showed up with spokes in it that came from another shop in Ohio. So, and, and I couldn't believe the prices they were charged. They, they, were, they were really 
inexpensive. That's, they, they, came, they came shipped just bundled as you see them. They set them up, speedy delivery, and shipping sticker attached to them, and they, they were sent to me. The now here's where I'm taking apart the, the wheels. Um, let's see. I, I made a stand for it. I just have a, a heavy metal plate that drill and pack a hole in it. You could fold them down so it was nice and firm for pulling the spokes out, cutting the rivets off. This is how you, I got most of the rims off. You just saw them to pieces. And here is where you uh, take the spokes off. I uh, cut the heads off the rivets, punched them out. There's an old rivet. And then I uh, wiggle and tap. I tap on the spokes and wiggle and pull them out. Some of them, the tenons broke, and I had to chisel out the tenons. There's the, the box of spokes as they came to me. Now I had to do some modification to the rivets. Oops. Um, this is an original rivet. This is the rivets as you buy them nowadays, the, the heads uh, don't match, so I altered the heads. I made them the same diameter, filed them to resemble the original spoke uh, rivets. Let's see. Um, the spokes needed a little sanding. They were a little rough. Cut them out, and there was tear out on the wood, so I clean them up. And you have to put an angle on the spokes. The spokes are actually stuck into the hubs at an angle. So then there's a dish to the to the wheels. And, and most wooden wheels, they'll have a dish that it gives them strength for a sideways force on them. Because if they were just straight, a sideway force would just cause the wheels to collapse. But if, if the spokes are in a cone shape, when that force pushes sideways, it can't, it can't, it won't break down. There's several different uh, angles on that too, isn't there? Yeah, there, there's, I have to put an angle on one side, and there's angles here that there's 16 spokes, and when they are tapped into the hub, they have to meet. So, so the, the, this angle, this included angle, is 22 and a half degrees because there's 16 spokes. We all do that. <laughs> Because, you know, remember your geometry, you know, there's 360 degrees in a circle and divide it by 16. And you get the angles. Yeah, there's you know, the you know, pile of spokes that crack, rotten. Okay, I saved a few spokes of the originals. Like, like this wheel here has five spokes from the original wheel. <clears throat> um, the wheels vary. The two wheels on the outer side of the cart that were under the eaves of the depot, which isn't ideal for, for maintaining this, <laughs> where we're basically rotted out. The, the two up next to the depot, the, the spokes were in much better shape, but the, the rims were still not good. So, the close-up of the hub, you know, I, I 
got a couple new ones pulled, uh, tapped into place, and I have to drill a hole through through the where they meet. On the old ones, you can see there's half a hole on each. You drill a hole through, and that's where the rivet goes through. That holds the hubs together. And uh, these hubs are, uh, it's called a Sarvin hub, this particular hub. There are many different hub manufacturers. That are, but this one was a, a quite popular one that uh, was used and is still used. Uh, the rivets I had to, I had to make a, a, a tool that supported the rivet head when I was doing the riveting. You know, the, the rivet sits backed up and then uh, and I made another this is the, the heading tool for for uh, forming uh, the rivet head <coughs> so I, I made those tools um, there are the rivets start to head one. After the rivets are in place, and I cut the spokes to length. surface if there's nothing to guide it into the, the proper position so the first off you have to you have to point the spoke and then you cut a tenon oh and, and spokes and I pick this up I look at it and I can see you know spokes aren't round it has an egg shape in its cross section and the, the, the pointy side goes to the outside. It just helps add strength to the to the wheel while maintaining a, uh, use a, a lighter. It, it shaves weight off the wheel, but it maintains strength by having that shape. <clears throat> now there's my setup for cutting the point on a, on a wheel. I had these things came for use in a, in a brace for a hand brace that you, you crank but I, I adapted it with a to run in my drill press I made an arbor to run it in my drill press and I have a, a fixture down here to locate the opposite spoke so that I, I did line a little pocket here that's in line with the, with the chuck. There's a close up of the pointer. There's the, the tendon cutter. Cutting a tendon. Now, this shot shows one of the more tedious. Uh, Not fun part of the project. That's 
scraping the paint off of the wheels. <laughs> and see a pile of paint chips on the floor there. But I got them all cleaned up. How many of the original spokes were you able to put in the four wheels? Let's see. I, uh, there were 64 spokes, and I replaced 27 of them. So, uh, you do that. 37. <laughs> there I have the spokes in, and I, I just lay up the rim on and the, the part rubs. The, these individual pieces are, people pronounce it differently. Some, some, some call them fellies, and others call them fellows. There's the fellow on just starting to eyeball where it goes. And this is where I laid out the spokes, the locations. I, uh, at, at the radius where the, of the tenons on the inside of the wheel, I calculated out what the cord would be from one location to the next. And I look, that's the dividers there is how I paste out the, the spacing so they'd be even. There's how I set it. I, you know, I did a little calculation to calculate the cord. I, I set it up at that dimension on my caliper and the, the set the, the dividers to the caliper and paste off the, the location. Now this is uh, drilling holes. <clears throat> in, in the valley, you saw. Uh, oh, let's see. And I've got a, a jig set up so that I'm, I'm drilling the hole that would be uh, through the center line of the radius, from, from the, the rim through the radius. I have a, a guide set up for that. Now there's right, assembling the fellies onto the, the spokes. Yeah. I don't know, Wayne stopped by and he saw me do one. So, <clears throat> but uh, in order to get, let's see. You can see the, the, the Fellie is set, is bent to the radius where the, the shoulder of this tenon on the spoke is. And in order to get those on, the, the, the ends of the spokes are wider apart at the outside here than they are at the inside. So I have to uh, Pull these spokes together to get them started, and that's what this tool is. It's a spoke puller. You set it on, and you can pull the pull the spokes together to get the spokes started in the holes. And you have to start it one side, and, and these these ribs are so stiff that. I have to spread the, the rim apart. And that's where this tool comes in. And I made this to, to fit on the rim. I'll Cool. Um, yeah, so 
but so I, I wound up making this. You know, I had a broken off shovel handle and, a, and pieces in my stash of metal bits that I, that I made these from. Here you can see I'm, I'm working my way around. And as I get the spokes on, on the one side, you keep hammering them up to the shoulder and you work your way around. Pulling the spokes together one, one after the other and letting the tension off of a spreader so that as you come around it starts coming together. There's, there's a shot of one felly on. After you get two fellies on, you, you, you cut the fellies originally a little bit long. Yeah. <clears throat> Once you get both fellies on, they may not be coming down to the shoulders. And you, you just take a handsaw and cut through the, where the fellies meet until everything just comes together. So it may take multiple passes with the hand saw between the joints to get, them, get everything to fit just right. Here's the two of the wheels done and two more to go. Well, this is a, a picture of a, an advertisement from 1860 for the hubs that were designed. It's endorsed by a, with a, a patent holder for this manufacturer who's making these hubs at that time. So that's it for the slides. <clears throat> now what I have left to do is, is I the, 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 the iron tires have to be shrunk fit onto these to, to hold everything nice and tight. And in order to do that I have to heat these bands up. And so I guess what I'm going to do is build a fire <laughs> on my uh, driveway and put a band in there, heat it up, and get it uh, expanded. And then while it's hot, you, 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 you slide it down over the wheel and you, you douse it with water and then it'll shrink and pull everything nice and tight. At least that's the way it's supposed to work. <laughs> I've never worked on wheels like this before. <laughs> and, uh, I always thought it would be an interesting project. And uh, when this came up to do for the society, it, it, I was interested from the first time you mentioned it. Because I didn't know if I'd ever get a chance to do this. And they, they, they were good enough to hand over their wheels to me and let me learn on them. <laughs> And people we are. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody else wanted them. <laughs> Big job. So that that's uh basically it. But now now it's gonna be difficult to find time to finish these because <laughs> it's gardening season. Oh yeah. Thank you, Andy. So uh, Andy is a uh, master. Well, I don't know if you're a master yeah. gardener. But well, you, you're a damn good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, I was. I'm just going to butt right in. Yeah, if you got any questions, you know. And that, this drove me nuts. Now, you saw where, uh, you know, these these spokes, I'm going to call them yeah. spokes, don't line up with the hole. So you put this on, like so, and then you, you pull them apart. You pull them together, or to, to pull them together, yeah. And and uh, I, I'm sure that he sweat a few cups of sweat, wondering if one of these is going to snap. Well, yeah, you, you hear a creak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'll never look at a wagon wheel again without without remembering this because it's not simple. All these special angles he's got in here. 
And you know the distance around here is different is different than the distance on the inside. And you got to get all those holes just perfect. You know, he said, well, yeah, yeah, we got 22 and a half. <laughs> My mind is just exploding when he's telling me about all this stuff. I've, I've got and a I'm, book or two at home that about rebuilding wheels. And uh, I've seen a demonstration of, of uh, the tires being shrunk on. You, know, you go to a threshing show. I, I saw it done up at Rolag, at the Rolag threshing show. The sewer, there was a guy there who was, he just had the parts like this laid out when I was explaining it. I talked to him. You know, and then I talked to the guys from the Gillow's Mess to learn a little bit about it. And then there's YouTube. There, there's a guy on YouTube who's in Montana that runs a wagon shop. And, uh, he puts out a video every Friday uh, early evening where he demonstrates all this stuff on video. He, this is what he's done for a living for the last 40 years. And watching those videos was, was just great for, for, uh, for actually seeing it done step by step. So, so I got plenty of ideas from him. There's nothing easy about this, though. There's nothing, you know, like you said, yeah. even these, these aren't round. You know, and they have to go, this has to be outside, this has to be inside, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these angles in here have to be absolutely perfect. They, they came pretty good. Well, I see a few things wrong here. But yeah, I'm sure you do. What I found was the, the, the cross section of the, the, these angles were, uh, some of them were parallelograms instead of rectangles. Which made for a, a little bit of adjusting to minimize gaps. And after the first wheel, I was, I don't know, I was a little disappointed. And my, my brother laughed at me, <laughs> saying, nobody else would see those but you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah. But uh, the, each wheel went better. So. Well, I think of, of, of all these kids. <laughs>